<laughs> it's not changed. <laughs> okay. I've only just really started doing yoga again recently because it was a really trigger actually the SI injury. So yeah, it's yeah, only so, 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 like sacred. Yeah, I've had a bit of an injury about four months ago. And it's oh. only really just started to feel kind of oh, normalish. Oh. Oh. Um, which affects everything. Affects all your movement, doesn't it? That, yeah. You did have I just well, I just couldn't do yoga. I couldn't do anything too mobilising or too stretchy. So I've been doing loads of Pilates, but I've been doing yoga recently again, and it feels actually okay. So I think. Um, I think we're nearly back to. You know. So today's class will be gentle. Hamstrings, SI. Yeah, hamstrings are always tight. <laughs> I'm doing this for Phil because he said to me, "You're always bloody chatting." So that when does it start? So <laughs> <laughs> right, come to standing. Just spread your feet, and then just slightly rock forwards and backwards. Just finding the point under the big toe joint, the little toe joint, and the heel. Connecting into your, something called a foot triangle, which connects into the, um, my understanding is the neural pathways, the neural science of the whole of the body. And then just slightly move from side to side. Again, just exploring, transferring the weight from one side of the pelvis to the other. And then come to standing. Lift and roll the shoulders back so this opens the energy pathways to the head. And breathing in, turn your head to the left. Taking in and out breath there. Come back to the centre and then turn your head to the right. Take an in and an out breath here. And then come back to the centre. Drop your chin to your chest, lengthening the back of the neck, activating the vagus nerve. And then take a hand and just place it on your chest to support your pressing down as you lift your head back up again. Come to step your feet slightly wider apart and come to this very familiar swing from side to side. In the Tibetan rites for perfect um, health, this is the very first movement. But in Tibetan rites, it's a swirling dervish that goes round and round in circles. This is a modified version. But you find this across, I think, the Middle Eastern practices. In Ayurveda, it moves all the five energies. So then start to very gently slow down. And then come to place your hands on your waist. Your feet comfortably apart for you and feel that you can adjust them. And then just start to swirl your hips in one direction. Again, you're balancing your pelvis. So maybe um, start very sm with small movements if you're concerned with that area. And then rest very gently, swirl in the opposite direction. And then come to drop your hands. Bring your feet a little bit closer together to a comfortable hip width apart. And then soften your knees and um, slide your hands down to either just above your knees or below them, probably above. And just circle both knees in one direction. Relax the head, relax the neck. And then just circle the knees in the other direction. And then just bend your knees further, just engage the core. In other words, bring your lower abdomen towards your spine a little bit, engage the perineum upwards, press your feet down and roll up to standing. Just once more, lift and roll the shoulders. Doesn't matter which foot, step one foot forward and just circle the ankle in one direction. 
and then circle the ankle in the other direction. So you're opening up the lung meridians here. And as Sue, as a reflexologist, would say, you're opening up you know, at this time of year with sinus and allergies in between. Yeah, and the lungs. Mm -hmm. And the lungs, which is, is what we need. Lift the other um, heel and just very gently circle in one direction. And then circle the heel in the other direction. You're also boosting your circulation here. And then just bring your feet to a comfortable hip width apart. Lift and roll the shoulders. Bring your hands to the heart centre and just bring your thumbs towards the chest, which extends you, lengthen you. And then really soften the knees. Circle the arms up. If you're stiff on the shoulders, keep your elbows bent. Clasp your hands and reverse them up. Really stretch. And then it doesn't matter which side, laterally to one side. You can stay static or just bounce in and out. Breathe in, press your feet down, stretch up, and breathing out, just to the other side. Come back to the centre, stretch your arms up, and just very gently turn to one side. Again, just test how little, you don't need to turn very much, how much you want to turn. Come to the centre, stretch up, and turn to the other side. Come to the centre, stretch up, and just test our balance by lifting the heels. Well done. And then as you lower the heels to the ground, just soften the knees. Bottom goes out behind you, and you'll feel your core engage slightly. Then breathing in, stretch up, lower the arms. Lift and roll the shoulders. Clasp your hands behind you. You can have a close weave, which is more yogic, but actually don't open your shoulders as much, or an open weave, just where it works for you, and open the shoulders. So this is almost a back bend, and you're opening the shoulders, heads here. Turn to one side. Breathing in, coming back to the centre. And turn to the other side. Come back to the centre. This is optional. You can soften your knees and just come forwards. Relax the neck, your hands go up behind you. And then press your feet down, soften your knees further to come back up right. Release the hands, just shake your hands out. And once more, just lift and roll the shoulders. And then bending your knees, slide your hands down to the shins. Press your hands into the shins, half lift. That's lengthening from the tailbone to the top of the head. Breathe out, soften the knees and soften the elbows and just breathe in. Breathing in, half lift and stay here as you breathe out. Breathing in, soften the knees, press the feet down and roll up to standing. Lift and roll the shoulders. Breathing in, hands up, join thumbs, and just very gently swaying palm, go from side to side. So in Ayurveda, this is a vata, um, works on the vata dosha, so principally air. And vata out of balance, or air out of balance, is principally um, the cause of any pain. So again, just choose how little or much you want to sway. And then just release the hands back down again. Lift and roll the shoulders. And we'll do this half salute to the sun again. Hands together at the heart centre. Soften the knees. Circle the energy up. Stretch up. Palms together. Draw the energy through the centre. And then just come to the shins. Half lift. So here you can bring your tummy slightly towards your back bone and engage the perineum as an option. Breathe in out, soften in, bend knees and elbows. Breathe in, half lift. Stay here as you breathe out. And when you next breathe in, soften your knees, press your feet down. You can use your hands to help you just guide up, right? Breathing in. Hands up, 
stretch your thumbs behind your little fingers in front really stretch your fingers and then just circle your wrists down and just again shake your hands out and then count your feet count to the hip width apart breathe in just arms outwards breathe out just make them come to bend on head down feet down hands meet Breathe in, draw the energy towards you, and breathe out, lower your hands. Soften your knees as you circle, out, breathe out, softening. Breathe in, draw the energy back, and breathe out. Again, your own time. Breathing in. And last time, breathing in. And out. Lift and roll the shoulders. Just stroke your fingers up the inside of the arm. And down the back. So you're getting the arm and how breathing is here. Again, stroking up on the inside. And breathing. And then breathing in. And breathing out. Just relax the hand and come to the other side as you stroke up on the inside. Out. Going down. Breathing in. Breathing out. Breathing in. Out. Lift and roll the shoulders. So just step your left foot slightly forward, your right foot out at about 45 degrees. If you want balance, move your left foot out more to the left. Make a very light fist with your right hand. This is a shoulder and neck um, calming mindfulness exercise. And watching your thumb as you circle your arm forward. If your shoulder's stiff, then just bend your elbow. You're moving slowly and notice where your eyes jump. I said it's an eyes, shoulder, neck exercise, mindfulness, because the eyes up disconnect the um, stress centers of the brain. And then just very gently thinking about reversing that circle. Finish that circle. Come to face the front. A uh, modified um, warrior two, or um, one, one, one bit of dance, the one. Breathing in, soften the front left knee. Cactus arms, breathing out, lower. And then breathing in, soften. And breathing out, lower. And last time, hold the breath for a nanosecond. Step the left foot back, lift and roll the shoulders, and then step in the right foot forward, making a subtle fist with the left hand. And again, making your circle coming forward first. Most people's eyes will jump and they're at the corners or the extremity of the circle. And the eyes and ex uh, muscle like anything else in the body. And then when you're ready to start thinking about reversing your circle, just reverse the circle. Finishing and breathing in, soften the front knee, breathing out, lower. Breathing in again, breathing out, lower. 
Uh, breathing in again, just hold it for a moment. And breathing out. Step your right foot back. Now to answer the hamstring request, we will do salute to the sun. I know you don't like dying with dogs, so don't, don't do it, <laughs> basically. <laughs> so come to the top of your mat. This is going to be very slow. So hands together at the heart centre. Soften the knees. Arms up, really stretch up. If your neck will allow, look back. If not, look straight ahead. Bring the head to upright. Hands together and draw the energy through the centre of the body. Slide your hands down to the ground, bending your knees as much as you need to. And step forward, slide your right foot back, just stretch around the right leg and lower the right knee to the ground. And then come to untuck your foot and come to, this is the hamstring bit, come to bring your bottom towards your right heel, using your hands just to stretch out the left leg, toes up. If you've gone for the wrong leg, don't worry. You can sit down if you want to, but just stretching out that leg. And then come forward, slide your left leg back, you're on all fours, hands are shoulders width apart, knees are hip width apart. It's just classic, dipping your back, flexing, this is movement, round for the back, flexing the back, rounding chin to chest. Breathing in, dipping the back, and rounding chin to chest. And again, dipping the back. And as you round back chin to chest, maybe widen your knees a little bit and come to bring your bottom towards the heels. Now, how far you bring your bottom towards the heels up actually you stretch your arms forward. You might want your bottom up and your elbows on the ground. And that will go into the upper back. The more you bring your bottom towards the um, your heels, the more that will stretch out your lower back. If you find that your head down is not comfortable, then just bend your elbows, make fists one hand on top of the other, and just rest your head or forehead on your fists. But again, you can choose to slightly come forward with that and have your bottom up. So just choose a position for you. Forward bend is common for the nervous system. And then very, very gently come to all fours again. And so this is either we're going to do cat cow and then uh, come up to standing, but to do the other side. But um, if you don't want to do down with dog, then don't just do this again, dipping the back, rounding the back, dipping the back. You just perhaps carry on with this suit, rounding the back, options to do downward dog, tucking the toes, tummy in, perineum engage. Just keep your knees bent, left on the back first, then straighten your legs and feel that you can widen your feet, particularly if you've got back issues. Press down your thumb, second finger and elbows in towards one another, then walk the dog by bending one knee and then bending the other knee. And you can come up onto your toes and then lower your heels, they don't have to touch the ground. And then we come to meet up together on all fours, lower your knees down to the ground. Slide your hands to the left, that gives space for your right hip to the right leg to slide up. Hands to either side of your right foot, just slightly stretch out your right hip by coming forward. But in order to come up, make sure that your knees are at 90 degrees. To tuck your left toes under, tummy in again. Lift your left leg. Step your left leg, left foot to your right foot and hands on the shins. Half lift again. Breathing out, soften in. Breathing in, half lift. Stay here as you breathe out. Breathing in, soften the knees. Press the feet down and roll up to standing. Lift and roll the shoulders. 
hands up, stretch, head upright, you put it back, lower the arms, lift and roll the shoulders, and we come to the left side. Clasp the hands behind you, aim the knuckles to the floor, open the shoulders, release the hands, and just run your fingers along the back of the leg, backs of the legs, softening your knees to bring your hands back down to the earth. Slide your left foot back. Enjoy stretching out under the toes. Left knee on the ground. And then right leg back. This time, slide onto your tummy and slide your hands in front of you. So you're stretching out on your tummy. So, um... Layla, SIS stabilizer, sacroiliac stabilizer. Tuck your toes underneath you and then extend your heels back so that your legs are off the ground and your heels, someone's putting your heels. And then just release the legs back down, untuck your toes and wobble the bottom from side to side. So that's it's called jelly wobble, it's a sacroiliac stabilizer. It should feel quite nice. And releasing. You can get someone to do that for you actually if they put their, their hand on your kind of top. I've actually bottom. been avoiding too much mobilization because it, um, I can do a little bit, but I find if I do too much, it um, uh, yeah, it makes it feel vulnerable. That <laughs> <laughs> is what I can describe. I, I start getting like nerve pain down my leg basically. So. How's that feeling? It's now? fine, yeah, yeah. But I just, I know that if I do too much kind of rocking, then later it will be later, be later. rather than now. Okay. So, so at least the rocking feels feels okay. So just choose how much you want to come um, to rock or not. Then slide your hands back to your chest, um, elbows in, palms down. Come back to kneeling. And again, come to your fours, bring to your cat, and then come around to your back. Cat, and cow. And then um, come to move your hands to the right, and bring your left leg up, and then extend the left toes up to the ceiling. And bring your bottom back as little as much as you like to stretch out the left side. And then and back, slide your left leg up. Again, dip in the back and rounding it, but if you want to, as you're rounding it, tuck your toes and come into down the dog, that's totally optional, coming into down the dog as an option, walking the dog, and then both legs extend a little bit, dropping the knees back down to the ground, hands go to the right, Left leg comes up, hands by the side of the left leg, just stretch into that hip, but bring your knee back to a 90 degree angle to put any weight on it. Tuck your right toes under, tummy in, lift your right knee and step your right foot to your left foot, hands onto the shins, half lift, breathing out, second in, breathing in, half lift. And stay here as you breathe out. Soften your knees. Press your feet down. Use your fingers if you need to to guide you up to standing. Lift and roll the shoulders. Circle your arms up. Once more, just hold your thumbs. Just very gently sway from side to side. Come to the centre and just circle your hands down. Lift and roll the shoulders, hands at the heart, and then we're going to come down to the ground. Have a bolster nearby if you think you need to do that. Or have it nearby anyway, as you know. 
and then come to sitting with the legs out in front of you. Flesh out from under the bottom if you need to do that. And just hands to either side of you, just to lengthen the body. I know you don't like big toes together, so we don't want that. Oh, this is funny. I find the vibration of it <laughs> goes up. So it well, actually... goes up through your body, which I suppose is quite good. But I don't really like the feeling. Anyway, mm-hmm. optional big toes together. I've just got feet, so that's why I've spent. Or not, according to how you do it. I did it because Carol's not here, because she hates no, that. It sends yeah, a vibration up your body. Well, she had bunions. Well, she's got bunions. Well, I haven't animals. got bunions. I think I just got sensitive. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> anyway, moving on from that, it's good for me. Ten us forward, so you're stretching the upper lymphatic system and then extending the um, heels. You're going into the backs of the legs there, into deep teeth, uh, just a couple of times. And then just circle the ankles a few times in one direction, almost like drawing a round a clock face with your big toe if you want an image to think on. And then circle your um, ankles in the opposite direction. And then your feet go from side to side, so it's just moving the joints in a slightly different way. And then just um, either tap or rub your legs, or anywhere actually, just really boost the circulation in the body. Anywhere at all. Then sitting up, lengthen the body. Bend your right knee. You'll have to engage your tummy or your core to be able to do that. If you lift your foot off the ground and keep your back straight, you'll have to do that even more. And then just bring your right leg over, your left. Take hold of your right foot with your hand and just manually circle the ankle. Again, it just gets into the ankle in a slightly different way. You'll feel it on your outer hip. And then circle in the other direction. And then if you can bear to do this, if you can't, go over the foot. But if you can bear to thread, thread your fingers through your toes. To know everybody. <laughs> Those are exercise rooms for today. Day. <laughs> and I think Sue will say that this goes into sinus and allergies and lungs. Yes, and... well, it's all everything facially, really, between your toes. So you've got your outer ear between your little toe and then your inner ear and the next one coming through to your eyes and then to the centre, third eye, nose. So just um, either backwards and forwards and then circle them one way and then circle them the other way. To balance the exercise, if you feel like doing it, just relax your fingers and then let your toes do the movement, which I don't like as much, but it's um, the other part of the exercise. And if you want to ask her anything, she's very flexible, you mm-hmm. can ask her. And then just holding your foot, make knuckles and just go anywhere on the foot that you feel that you want to just massage out around the what's around the ankle again, just on behind the ankle. Well, that's like your lower lymphatic system. Right, okay. And your sort of groin area. Lovely. Make well that's where your lower lymphatic system is, isn't it? It's up into your groin. So where would um Layla's um sacroiliac joint be on that? Well I was thinking about that before. Um let's think. Um because the, the spine is all along the inside of the foot, so you start, I'll, do, I'll show you another foot because you can't see them there. So it starts from, from here, so you've got your shoulder coming down to your hip. So the base of your spine really is sort of down on your yeah, heel there. Yeah, I have had ankle issues on this side for years. So that's 
probably going to be fine it's, recently, actually, oh, right. weirdly enough, but obviously it's moved to somewhere yeah. else. But it's it's yeah. it's yeah, it's yeah. right at the base yeah, of your sort of corner of your yeah of your heel there. So just That's really interesting to know. Play around. And then when you're ready, just hug the right knee, unfosh it, hug the right knee in. Again, sitting up. You'll have to engage your core a little bit and then just supporting that leg. Just slide it along, just bounce your legs again. And we come to the other side. So when you're ready, uh, hug your left knee in, sit up, bring it over. And just hold your foot as you circle manually the ankle one way. Have you ever come across, um, it's in Hatha Yoga, a set of exercises called Parlamik Stana from the Wind. And this is the anti rheumatic mm -hmm. section, which is really good to wake up the feet, the foundational mm -hmm. energy, yeah, yeah. foundation of the body, the Palma energy, um, which is the foundation, yeah. And then the other way. And then just thread your fingers through the same way. Again, if you can't stand to do that, just put your hands over, although it does block the energy flow in some way, but anyway, whatever. And just either back, back, backwards and forwards, maybe circle one way, maybe circle the other way. Just. And then option. You can carry on doing what you're doing. The option is to relax the fingers and let your toes do the work, which I find really not as pleasant. But anyway, I actually quite like in this one, kind of putting my fingers in between the, the bones as sort of support. It's quite, quite nice. You get a bit more kind of range of movement there. But that's just me. Mm -hmm. Quite, yeah. yeah. We all find bits that we like or don't yeah. like. And then just. Uh, make the knuckles with the other hand, support your foot and just go anywhere where it feels quite nice on the foot. And just hug the left knee in. There's an option if you want to, you mentioned core. Now, I can't, I'm not good at this. So, big portion, that's the other knee in, tummy in, and you have to sit I requested straight. call, but I can't be on my tailbone. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll do this for you. Yes. 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 It's just you, Sean. Um, <laughs> so, I'll do core on my legs out and boat, which I can't do. I really so It's so strong boat. on your. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then just. You may have to tuck it in. Knees. Yeah. So the the <laughs> and then we're back, kind of back to legs out, seated, slight beam, hands down. Now, you need a bolster potentially under your right leg for your right side. Janish is asking that, to knee pose. So just hands down, just to lengthen the body. Have the right knee into the chest and open it out to the right. And if you want anything underneath your right hip, then use that to support it. Hands down, that just lengthens the body and turns slightly towards the outstretched left leg. If you want to be very yoga, you have your hands up and come straight down. If you're mindful of your back, you won't. You'll bend your elbows and leave with the chest and just slide the hands down to where it works for you. So it's a forward bend, it's a slight rotation, it's opening the hip, in this case, on the right side. And um, deferring to Charlotte here, it's a quadratus lumborum, isn't it, Charlotte? That muscle running along down the bottom there, yeah. mm -hmm. back, which is being looked at here. But again, I would emphasize if this is a relaxed Janish's asana. Depending on the length of your arms, you might want to hold the sides of your feet or your but again, don't stretch or don't strain. Just relax the back of the neck. And 
you're taking a couple of breaths here. Your left heel classically should be extended with the toes up to the ceiling so that you're stretching out the back of the left leg. And then when you're ready, think about bringing your tummy slightly in towards your spine, gauging the perineum upwards and sliding your hands back up your leg. Place your right hand behind you, your left hand up. If you want to come to the next part, optionally, it's strong, so I wouldn't necessarily recommend it, but I know Charlotte likes to do it, I think she does. Just up, chin in, and then just lower, back down. Your outstretched, oh, well done, left leg, bend it so that you're now in double V. Just touch your hands to the side of you, and your body will naturally be leaning to the right. As you turn to the right, lengthen your chest and lead with the chest, coming forward in room like a very soft pigeon, a little bit or a lot, so that's the outer hip. You can stay up, you can come down to your elbows, if you maybe make fists with your hands, resting your head on your fists, or if you're very flexible, you can just spread out. Just choose where it works for you. Very helpful for the hips. And one of the five poses for perfect hip health. Now, see your ne left buttock does come off the ground. It does. Yes, you want me to have both of them. If you fancy support underneath the left button, you can, but you, I'm not sure that you really need no, it. No, no, it's just I just want to make sure it wasn't some sort of thing where you have to have everything connected. No, no, you'd be a contortionist. Yes. <laughs> and thinking about coming up, just again, bring your tummy or your lower abdominal muscles in slightly towards your spine to support your back. Press down to come up, hands to either side of you, just lengthen. And then slightly lean back to give you room and space to lift your knees. And just slide your legs out. And then just bounce your legs. Again, if you want to rub them, then that's absolutely fine. Cap them. And then if you want to choose your support, we're going to bring it to the left side. And your legs in a slight V again. Press down with your hands to lengthen from the chest. Then come up right. And bend in the left leg. Take it foot off the ground if you want an abdominal focus. And open your left leg to the left. Just supporting by the bolster if you need that. Extend your right heel, toes up. Again, just hand lightly touch. Turn towards your outstretched leg, not a lot. And for back care, just hands a little bit, or just leading with the chest, just slightly come down. So this is where I can't do what I'm saying. We are not supposed to lurch to the right. We're supposed to extend evenly on both sides, which I find almost impossible to do. But it's just, um, if you're lurching to the right, then just be aware of it. Right heel is extended just to stretch out the back of the leg and the part of the leg, too. And then just bringing the tummy in slightly towards the spine, use your hands to support you to walk back upright again. You can have the support underneath you or remove it, whatever. Press your left hand behind you, and then your right arm goes up. Look up. This, this connects the mind from the stress centers of the brain. It's also a nice high exercise. And then it's optional whether you want to roll and lift up. Chin comes in to protect the neck. And then very gently lower your bottom back down to the ground. And your outstretched right leg this time you bend up, so you're in that double V, perfect for health. Hands to either side of you, that lengthens you. Turn towards the left knee, which you'll do naturally. 
Lean into the chest, come forward. You can stay up, you can come onto your elbows, you can come right down, you can make fists with your hands. And just resting. You've got fists with your hands, you're activating into the third eye, Rajna Chakra, which is part of our intuition. Neural gram. It's all associated with the chakra. Again, it's your targeting on the left hip because this is like a semi very soft pigeon. One of which is cooing above it. <laughs> <laughs> and then Thinking about tummy in as you walk back up again. Hands to either side and you just lean back and then straighten me. Legs just bounce them again. Flesh out from under the bottom if you need to do that. And just leave them with the chest, just neutralise or compensate for what we've just done. It's a slight twist, just slightly come forward. Then just very gently think about tummy in, slide your hands up. And then we're going to come to lie, but have your bolster handy if you need it, perhaps on your right side. So when you come to lie, take any support you need for your back, but we're going to start lying in this bed anyway, which is always helpful for your back. Palms will ultimately be down. Just relax, make sure your shoulders away from your ears. We're coming into a somatic aspect of yoga here, um, looking at the sensory aspect as you just turn your head gently from side to side. So you're releasing all tension in the back of the neck. Your, neck. your head's not being asked to support or tense to hold, it's just being released to the ground. And then just slide your feet slightly wider towards the edge of the mat. Your hips will come off here, uh, just let the knees drift. And you can drift a little bit or a lot. Again, that depends on how comfortable you feel. If you want to keep the movement minimal, then it is just a couple of millimetres. Keep your massage across the top of the sacral area um, and that. GB30 point, which is called the Garden Radio, where you'd have a tennis ball under your bottom. And your head can stay still as you're swaying your knees or move from side to side. And in theory, your knees should move in the opposite direction away from the head, but if you can do it the other way around, that's fine. And then bring your, knee, your feet slightly closer to your bottom, your knees will hit your Part. Palms down and just some micro pelvic tilts, just flattening the back as if you're going to lift your bottom, and then again the tailbone goes down towards the ground and there's a little gap under your back. So it's going the other way. And then just release and relax. And hug your left knee into your chest. And if you're comfortable to do so, just slide your right leg along the mat. So just looking at the hip here, just circle your left knee a couple of times in one direction. And circle your knee a couple of times in the other direction. And then using your left elbow to press on the ground, we're going to roll over to the right. And if you've got your bolster handy, then as you roll over to the right, the left hip will come off the ground. And you can use your bolster to support underneath the left inner thigh. Your left hand, start with your left hand on your waist. This opens out the left side, the left lung. And your right hand can relax somewhere on the outer part of your right foot your left thigh. Your head 
can go anywhere, it can go to the right, it can look up or it can go to the left. Again, yogically you would look to the left, your eyes open or closed. Just extend your right heel, just stretch out the right leg and then just relax the right heel. And if you're happy to stay like this, please do. If you want to raise your left hand, back of the hand above you, you're stretching out onto the under, the upper lymphatic system, that's really your tool wheel onto the left arm. And if you really want to go for it, you will open your palm out, palm down at shoulder height to the left. And that's a really strong stretch. So just choose your expression, hand on the waist, back of the hand above you, or just out at shoulder height, the left hand palm down. And very gently thinking about rolling onto the back. Bend both knees, press the feet on the ground, palms down, because you'll feel twisted. So if you press your feet down, lift your bottom fraction off the ground and just straighten the bottom out. If you used the bolster before, then take it from the right side to the left. And then hug the right knee in. You can choose to circle your right knee a couple of times, um, either with the left knee bent or extend the left knee along the ground, whichever works for you. But circle the right knee a couple of times in one direction. And again, your circles can be tiny, micro movements, or larger, and that will depend on what it feels like for you. And then just rolling over and using the back of your left elbow, rolling over to the left. If you want the support underneath your inner leg, for your right leg, then do. Right hand on the waist, or choose what position of the hand you might want. And then left hand somewhere on the out, a part of your right thigh. And your head, again, choose your position. And then think back very gently, rolling onto the back. Again, place both feet on the floor. Knees up to the ceiling, press down and just straighten the back out. Once it's straightened back on the floor, hug both knees into the chest and just very gently rock from side to side, just easing out the lower back. And then coming to the um, back of the leg again. Maybe supporting, if you need to, your right leg to place your right foot back on the ground, but your left knee stays hugged into the chest. Drop your hands and clasp them underneath your left thigh, and very, very gently extend the left leg up to the ceiling. You can keep a bend in the knee, and extend the left heel, and just again feel that stretch at the back of the leg. And then relax the foot, and just circle the left ankle a couple of times in one direction and a couple of times in the other direction. And then as you soften your left leg by bending it at the knee, just use your hands to stroke or massage the back of your leg, anywhere around your thigh, anywhere on the leg. And then just very gently think about hugging the left knee to the chest and placing the left foot on the floor. And coming to the right side, Again, then hugging the right knee into the chest. Drop your hands underneath your right thigh, clasp them, and very, very gently extend the right leg up to the ceiling and extend the right heel. And again, we'll stretch out the back of the leg. And then relax the heel and circle the right ankle again a couple of times in one direction. 
and a couple of times in the other direction. And then bending the right leg slightly, again massage the back of the leg, that feels good, or the front of the leg, or anywhere on the leg. And then think about hugging the right knee to the chest, hugging the left knee to the chest, you might want to widen the knees. Again, just gently rock from side to side. Come back to the centre and holding both knees into the chest. As you breathe in, still hold the knees and let them drift slightly away from you. Almost as far as arms length or where it suits you. And then breathing out, hug both knees into the chest. Now just repeat that a few times to your own breath pattern. So you're rocking over the lower back area, and blood into the system, it's very soothing works on the Apanasana energy in Ayurveda, which is the foundational energy. And it works on the Vata element. Vata, dosha being principally air, which out of balance will cause pain. So this is regulating that. It's a very comforting, comforting position. It's like an upside down child, so it's soothing for the nervous system, which always is when you're coordinating a movement. And you just really enjoy hugging the knees into the chest. You're going over your lower um, lumbar vertebra. Just and then think about holding both knees and then circling both knees. The circle can be small or larger, and this will target the weight right at the base of the spine, almost onto the sacral area. It's quite a small area, but you'll just well, you can make the circle as small or as big as you want to. Should be nice. And you're using the body weight to massage around the base of the spine, just that area. And then, of course, just think about circling your knees in the opposite direction. It can be tiny circles, micro circles, or bigger circles. You choose. And then supporting your legs underneath to place the feet back down onto the ground, knees are up, feet are hip width apart. And just place your hands on your abdomen, elbows out. If you prefer one hand on the abdomen, one hand at the heart, then please do. And we're going to take a few breaths, breathing in through the nose, but breathing out through the mouth. Your own time, your own pattern. Think about releasing the breath. And while you're here, have a thought for the day, the Sankalpa. A wish for yourself, someone else, or setting your intention for the day. And just have that thought a couple more times. And then let that go. And then hugging once more both knees into the chest and take whatever movement works for you before we're going to come to a seated position. Whether it's rocking from side to side, or whether it's hugging in and letting go, or a combination of both. Just ease out the lower back again. And think about coming to a seated position, however that works for you. Whether you roll to the side, whether you come up, but just come up gently to come to a comfortable seated position. There's the class. Bring the hands towards the third eye, kind thoughts, to the lips, kind words, heart, kind deeds, and then chin to chest, take a bow for yourself, and go ahead. Okay.
Thank you. Thank you. And Thank I you. will read the cards. So first card. New beginnings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Second card, celebration. Mm, that's nice, isn't it? Yeah. Celebration. Yeah. And third card, soulmate. Oh, mm. they're all nice, they're nicely together. That's lovely. So that's rather nice. Mm. And with one for luck, meditation. There you go. Mm. Perfect. Thank you. Nice thank you, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Thank that you. Was that was really nice. Yeah, lovely. Nice. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Very somatic. Styles, lovely. I say that's kind of typically ish. Okay, it goes up or down according to who's here. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of yeah. 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 Oh, that's nice. Can join any time. You're very welcome to join. Um, so yeah. I'll turn the video off. Oh. How are you? How's work? How's everything? Yeah.